this is the printout I'm using. I just created it in Excel. And up here at the top, you can see I've listed Monday through Thursday with the date underneath. On Friday, that's our community day for classical conversations. So that is all we do for school that day. Um, and then up here at the very top, I have our school activities. I had to mark out someone's name, but that's just kind of what we have going on that day. So I can kind of just look at it at a glance. I obviously have my calendar. I actually use my calendar on my phone just so I always have it with me. But this is just kind of an at a glance type of a thing that we have um, that I can just see everything that's going on for that day and realize, you know what, <laughs> this is actually today and it has turned into a crazy day. So we're, we're not going to get to school today. So there's just been a lot of things, doctor's appointments and such that have been going on. So this is for the current week. And then what I do is I just have everything for Monday listed. <clears throat> I kind of made a key for myself down here, but I don't really need that anymore. Um, so I've been doing this for about four weeks now, and it has been a complete change up because if you guys have seen my other video where I decorated my planner, um, that was what I did all last semester up until even through January, and then in February I changed it. So I have just kind of been feeling like this will make my life a lot easier and will cut down on the amount of time that I have to plan each week and um, decorating the planner. While it was very fun um, and pleasing to the eye, I was feeling like it was taking some time um, and I just was kind of, I don't know, it was fun to do for a while. So anyways, what I have created here in this Excel spreadsheet is... Um, what we start out our day doing. So upstairs, before we even come down to our schoolroom, we do our timeline and catechisms, um, catechism songs. And so our timeline song is about 13 minutes and that is through Classical Conversations. I just play it. Um, I have it all on my phone and I just play it through our Bluetooth speaker. And then I really enjoy these catechism uh, this catechism CD, I guess you would call it. It's actually on Amazon Prime, and it is called Westminster Catechism, and it's really great. Holly Dutton, I believe, is the name of the gal who sings it, and um, she plays guitar while she does it. It's very well done, and I just really like that my kids are learning those solid biblical truths and um, through song, of course, because <clears throat> that is what we are all about. <laughs> Um, and then we do, so I thought I would show you what we do and I'll actually show you, um, all the books and everything that we are using. So first we have our CC, our classical conversations review, and that is right here on our wall. And so we go over all of this, the history sentence, the science, the math, the Latin, the English, and the geography for this particular week. And, um, our timeline cards are up there. And these are our maps that we use for finding, um, like for instance, here's one week, oops. And these are the five places we have to find. So this is for my older son, it folds out and it has just the black line map and it also has a colored map, it folds all the way out. So that is his, and then for my younger two, I actually have these maps, um, they each have two. And this one is a world map, and on one side it has these pictures and just the places kind of marked out, and a list as well. And then on this one, it's a more of, you know, just Africa, I guess. And that just covers, um, I've mentioned before, but there are three cycles in classical conversations. So this covers um, what we're covering in cycle one. The next thing you will see is I have a Bible story, and I want my older son to read aloud to us all. Um, I will tell you, we do not get to these every single day. Sometimes we skip this one. Um, we always do, you know, math and English and all of that. Not to say that we skip the Bible every day. That is not what I'm saying. But I do have a lot of reading scheduled in, and... Um, so we don't get to all of the reading. We always get to like the main, um, you know, kind of reading, writing, and arithmetic type of things. But um, as far as all the reading that you will see that we're doing, <clears throat> sometimes we skip some of them. 
just because of time. So this is a very, I'm sure you guys have maybe seen this one. It just has very short stories and it's perfect for my son to read. Um, and it's the perfect length for my other two to listen to. The next thing is the hymn study, and that is this. It's hymns for a kid's heart, and I actually borrowed this because I had a hard time finding it. It was very expensive on Amazon. I'm sure I can find it cheaper somewhere else. So anyways, it should be around $15, I believe, but I was finding it for like $60. <laughs> so anyways, I'll just, I'll check back again. I'm sure they'll change it, but what it is, it, it has a CD in the back, and I'm sure you've heard of Johnny Erickson Tata and Bobby Wogamuth, but basically what they have done is they have several, let's see, I'll get to it. They have all of these hymns and there are different, there are several books of these. So there's more than just these, um, these hymns. But basically what you do is you play the hymn or what I do with the book is I play a hymn and then we read about it. So we play the hymn, Holy, 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 and then it talks about, um, the author of the hymn and it tells them a little story. And then it usually is Johnny Erickson Tata, or I believe, I don't know, the only ones we've read so far, she's written and it's from my heart to you. And it just kind of talks about, um, her journey, her spiritual journey. And, um, so her spent her take on it and the, on the hymn and that kind of thing. So it's a very, very good, um, theologically rich study. I've really enjoyed it so far. The kids have really enjoyed it because the stories that they write in here are wonderful. And, um, that is our hymn study. The next thing we work on, we have our scripture. That is also, again, through Classical Conversations this year. We're doing Exodus 21 through 17. It kind of lists the um, Ten Commandments. So that is what we sing every day. Then next we have character posters that we're going over. I'm just hanging them up on our wall right now. So we, we just do one poster a week. Right now we're doing fairness. And we always make a funny... We, we kind of say character counts how we think the animal would say it. And then we read over every day, are you being fair? And do you play by the rules? Do you take turns and share? When you disagree, do you try to see the other person's side? And do you speak up if you know something is unfair? It's really been a great way to open up conversation, especially when you disagree, do you try to see the other person's side? That has been excellent to try and talk with through with my kids this week. And I believe I got these posters, I want to say at the dollar store. So they're kind of funny. I mean, they have really funny names. Ansvar the Elephant, Karina the Kangaroo, um, Ostis the Lion, and Gista the Giraffe. So <laughs> I'm sure I don't know where they're from, but they are awesome and my kids have really enjoyed them. The next thing we do is we do read aloud and then copy work and dictation. We haven't done much with dictation, but what we're doing for copy work for my older one, of course my younger one, he's doing something different, but, um, sorry, this is our history sentence for classical conversations, and it's already kind of um, written on there. I'm sure you can see it if I get close enough. And so my son just, uh, to practice his cursive, as you can see, he's not super neat, <laughs> but he, he, um, I print these out and he does these on Monday. He copies that on Monday and then the rest of the week he does this handwriting without tears. And I know this is a copy, which is terrible. Um, I got this from my mom a long time ago anyways. And so this is the copy, um, the copy work that he works on. And we've had the book for the other ones. I don't know why we have a copy of this. But anyways, he works on those. And so it's just, as you can see, some some days he has more to write. And other days he just practices more of the letter and the letter transitioning to um, another letter. So he works on that while I read. And my other, my son who's in kindergarten works on his copy work while I read um, like a missionary story of some sort. I just think that's a great idea. I tried the YWAM books. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those, but um, we were trying to read like, oh gosh, who are we trying to read? Like C.S. Lewis, and there's 
John Wesley and just all kinds of <laughs> great people to read about, but it was not keeping my younger two um, kids' attention. So I've opted for something a little bit more simple, and this one is doing the trick. This is actually a sunlight recommendation, and it is, it's great. I don't know. <laughs> they find the best books. So we're reading that. So just like a couple of chapters while they do their copy work. Then we go into science and science each and every day as you can see I've kind of mixed it up a little bit on Monday we read the back of our card which I'll show you in a second on Tuesday I've been getting books from the library um, sometimes it's the uh, magic school bus if they they had one on um, like the ocean one week and so I got that book from the library when we were studying the different type or different um, oh gosh what were they the different ocean zones and so we'll read a book that day um, I did not get one this week and then we did a project yesterday which had to do with crystals which was kind of from a couple of weeks ago from our science and then I have a nature book on Thursday that we read and sometimes do the activity in there so here's my science cards they are through classical conversations and this is the front of it and then the back it actually has our science sentence for the week and then it explains it so I just read that to them on on um, Monday and if my older son has any questions we just kind of look it up from there so those have been great this year on Thursday this is the nature book that we use and you guys I found this at the Goodwill but it has been a diamond in the rough it is such a cool book it has 365 activities to do so if I open it up to March 17th there is some really cool um, either experiments or activities that you can do and I will say this has been one of the best purchases if I can find something like it I will link it um, but I will say we live in the Midwest and so we do have all four seasons and this book has been very easy to use at all times of year. Of course some days it says go out in the snow and we might not have snow but that's just because it's been a mild winter or whatever like usually we would have snow at that point. So what I do since we only do this book use this book one day a week is I kind of glance at the whole week and see what would be um, the best thing for us to do that week and that's what we pick. As you can see, we have our Saxon math next, and what I've been doing is I've actually been on Monday, even though it says Tuesday this week, it was just a different week. On Monday, I've been having him do two lessons and then just one lesson the rest of the week. Since we only do four days of school at home, um, I still like to get in five lessons, and that seems to be working well. We did switch to Saxon math, and much of the same reasoning as we switched our English curriculum CC or classical conversations ends up using or they use sex and math for the upper grades and so eventually we would have to switch uh, just to make it easier um, I just did it this year and this is the if you use sex and math and you think well that what is that book the cover is a lot different um, than the normal Saxon it's usually spiral bound but this is the intermediate three so it's specifically well from my understanding it's specifically um, geared towards if you are switching math curriculums at this age it's kind of um, like an like a good math book to kind of get you used to the Saxon way of math so I don't know that is my impression of it I really have loved Saxon so far and the things that I've noticed we switched over from Matthew C I'm still using Matthew C for my younger son um, the things that I've noticed that have been the most uh, glaringly different, I would say, is the spiral approach that Saxon takes. I actually really like it. It's every day you're reviewing. Um, and Matthew C. had a little different approach to that where they would introduce the new concept and that's all you would do for a few days and then it would start the review in with it. Um, the other thing that I have noticed with Saxon is just the, the more real world application. Um, pretty much in this book a lot of the problems have are are kind of like story problems and so <clears throat> even if it's a simple addition problem it will write it in such a way that it's talking about money or something like that not all of them are like that but I would say more so than the Matthew C and I really do like that I feel like it's helpful to my son and then we go into flashcards 
Um, we do those, and then there's also this streaming edition practice. It's another thing I found on Amazon Prime. If you guys haven't tapped into that, and if you have Amazon Prime, um, like streaming, like the music part of it, if you've never gotten into that, I would suggest looking at it. There is some really great music in there and some really good educational things as well. Next we go into our spelling and as you guys saw over here, here is the spelling. It is called the Phonetic Zoo. It's um, like by IEW, the Institute for Excellence in Writing, and um, Andrew Poudois, if you know who that is. So this is how it works. It's mastery. So my son is doing just list A right now. And I believe you can just, you know, kind of gauge where your, ki where your child is and then they can just keep using these. I would say it was more on the pricey side, especially for a spelling curriculum. It was about $100 for this packet and then or for this list of cards and then also for a CD that you can put into your computer and they actually read the read the list to, to the child and then they actually go back through and there's another um, list where they actually spell them out so they can check it themselves. So that's been really helpful. It's something he can do all on his own and it goes over this jingle or this rule as well and it it also says that on the CD. So it's all comprehensive and I guess I was willing to pay that to have a whole subject um, that was just student led kind of thing or just where he could do it himself. And that really meant a lot to me at this point where I was having to work with him on math and things like that. So that's been a really good experience for us so far. Next, we have our typing along with our spelling, and that's just a free website that we go to. It's called Dance Mat Typing. I will try and link that below as well. Then we do our Shirley English, and then we do our Book of Greek Myths. And this, whoops, that's not it. Um, this is our, our Usborne Illustrated Greek Myth Stories. Osborne has done a fabulous job because if you've ever read the Greek myths, you know that they're kind of racy and a little, um, yeah, just really crazy and maybe not kid friendly. But Osborne has done a wonderful job and the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. My kids have been begging to read these and I've they're listed by chapter or they're broken down by chapters. Um, there's Pegasus, well, okay, that's not the beginning of that story, but there is a list of the story, and then there's actually, um, you know, different chapters, so it's easy to break it down, but, like, even the scary things aren't all that, I don't know, I mean, they don't water it down too much, but at the same time, I didn't feel like my kids were traumatized by the pictures, <laughs> and, I mean, there are some things in there, like Helen of Troy and things like that, where, you know, you have to tell that part of the story, um, in order to, I mean, because that's why they, the whole war started. So anyways, they did a very good job of kind of glossing over that maybe at that point. Sorry, one of my children is playing the piano apparently. Um, and so anyways, I thought they have done an excellent job. And then what I've done after we get done reading our Greek myth is I have gone on YouTube and I found that, um, they have videos and they're cartoons and again, they've done a great job of kind of um, making them more kid friendly. And so I've let them watch those after we get done reading a story for the week. And I was dragging it out all week, but my kids would want me to read the whole story on day one. So I've just, I've made it into two weeks or into two days. And then our history timeline cards, those were over on our board. They look like this. And what I've done, as you can see, I've kind of put two together and then one on day four or Thursday. And what I do is a lot of times I'll grab these and go upstairs and while we're eating lunch, I'll read them to them or I'll read them to them while they're working on something that they can kind of, um, you know, half listen to or whatever. But on the back of these cards, they just give a really good... Um, tidbit of information about the well it's not a tidbit it's I think I feel like it's pretty compre comprehensive for the back of a card but for my kids as ages it's really great to kind of they know the timeline they know Australia becomes a commonwealth but they don't know anything more than that so this kind of just helps break that down and give them some more info information 
So the last thing that we have to go over, the last little bit, it, uh, um, is Song School Latin. I have the book for this. I've tried and tried again to start it, and I've always kind of <laughs> dropped off and failed at that. We also do Spanish, as you see. So I got this Song School Latin DVD set at the beginning of the year, and it has been fabulous. I just keep it in our van, and if we're going somewhere that takes about 15 or 20 minutes to get to, I just throw this in, and my kids love it, and it has been kind of our Latin for the year. And then again, like I said, we do Spanish, and I kind of just mix it up with um, different things for that to practice. And then each boy on his own does some sort of reading for the day. It can be at night before bed. It's not a real, well, with my younger one, it is a set time, but with my older one, it's not. Um, and then we read Little Pilgrim's Progress before bed. So I wanted to show you those books here. Um, so this is the Little Pilgrim's Progress. It's a great book. Um, I will say I don't agree with all of the theology in the book, um, but mostly I do. And it's just a great allegory of the Christian life. And this was a like a library book sale book. And then those are the books that my younger son reads. So there's some great Usborne books. I've just had these Phonics Clifford books forever. Um, I'm borrowing the Berenstain Bears Phonics Fun from my sister. And then those are some more Usborne books that my sister actually had. We kind of switched back and forth. And um, she let me borrow those. And it's great because on one page I can read more of the story. And then on the other page it has just a little a couple sentences that he can read with me. And so those have been really fun. And one last thing down at the bottom. Usually if we have an activity that I want to do... Um, I will try and just write that. Sometimes I'll just hand write it in. But that takes you through our beautiful schedule. Um, it is not so pretty and decorated like my other one was, but it's very, I don't know, it is, it's just, I look at it and I think, okay, we've got to get um, the job done. And it's just really encouraged me and motivated me. And, um, the other thing I was going to say about this was that uh, this is a binder and I have kept a bunch of history highlights and things mostly from classical conversations that I don't want to lose but yet I don't use every single day and there's like Bible memory work and there's some science snippets and then these are just extra resources. Um, like oh, just different lists, like suggested reading lists and things like that for each week. So I look at those every once in a while, but I don't, whoops, don't use them every single day. But it's just a good place to keep them so they're not all loose around in my drawers of my desk. And I have found that to be helpful. So I hope you guys have enjoyed looking at my schedule and I hope you've um, gathered some tidbits of information that maybe you're going to try and incorporate into your school day. I wish you guys all the best as you homeschool, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.